everyone. Welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vin, that's Jill, and that's you at home watching us live here on Twitch.tv, listening to us after the fact on the podcast, maybe watching us on YouTube, Odyssey, wherever you may be. What's new? What's fantastic? Chaos month for every single one of you out there. But we do got some good news for everybody. The rectangle parts are slowly pouring in. Woohoo! I'm building a Steam box. It's not even really a Steam box. It's a replacement. It's like a multifunction box, but I had to order everything. I don't think Arthur and again for the case. It's got the PSU, so we're good there. I got the RAM. Got the CPU showed up today. Nice. And somewhere between the day and the 29th of this month, we'll get the motherboard. Thanks, Amazon. Uh, speaking of Amazon, I won the box lotto. I, I'm no longer jealous, Jill. Okay. <laughs> of people posting pictures. I ordered a uh, just a right angle coaxial cable thing. You know, it just plugs in one way and it changes the angle of the coax cable. Yeah. It's a right angle. A little tiny thing. Came in a box about that big. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I had no idea what was in the box. I was like, what is this? <laughs> wow. Hmm. I guess they didn't want to bend it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Open it up. It was mono price too, and it is. Oh. I finally got a real. Um, I didn't even take a picture of it. I was. Uh, I like wanted to punch myself for that, but yeah, it was a little tiny thing in the big box. I'm like, well, I don't know how that happened. That was pretty much most of my excitement. How about you, Joe? What's going on? Oh boy, a lot. So actually, a few weeks ago, our friends over at System Seventy Six and Cheese Bacon sent me this beautiful. And well made launch heavy keyboard to review. Woohoo! And uh, uh, it's a customizable full size keyboard with a number pad, and it was just released uh, last Thursday for $2.99. And I had actually tested the launch light keyboard with pink switches at the Southern California Linux Expo and really, really loved it. And I've actually been wanting to buy the launch light with pink switches ever since I tested it as scale. So System76 and Cheese Bacon in our chat made me the launch heavy keyboard with the pink switches. And of course, it's got uh, pink LEDs as well. <laughs> and they're really nice, Finn. Um, what's, what you'll be happy about is they're the quietest mechanical keyboard switches I have ever used. That's and like saying you have the good type of cancer. Yes. <laughs> well, it's nice because the, the pink keys live in that sweet spot between, you know, the reds and the browns and are quiet yet tactile. And, you know, this is just be a great keyboard um, for, you know, Linux coders, developers and animators who do a lot of number crunching. So it's nice to get a full size keyboard um, available from System76. And I have been really enjoying this this keyboard. It's been on my uh, my main podcasting rig here. I've been using it for a couple of weeks. How much? Secretly. <laughs> oh, so it's uh, $2.99 huh. and it's uh, fully customizable and um, it's got lots of really fun RGB uh, unicorn uh, vomit, if you would like to <laughs> like. <laughs> so I'm going to ask for the people, how do you control the RGB? <laughs> well, it's really nice because they have a keyboard configura configurator software, which is great for changing the RGB colors and the, and the patterns. And you have four levels of customization on the keyboard for the different, you, you can assign, you know, different functions to different keys, which is really nice. And it comes with a bunch of keys that you can re replace the keys that are on here with a, uh, um, other keys of different colors and i even put on this one i put there's a system 76 key as my escape and a pop os key down here as my super key so it's it's pretty cool i'm really falling in love with this keyboard <laughs> hold it up again let me take a look okay so let me try because because i'm using it on the computer I gotta be very, very careful. All right. <laughs> there we go. That's a better shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looks horrifying. <laughs> yes. But you know, System Seventy Six has just handcrafted a a beautiful so full size keyboard. 
you know, for the Linux community. And, uh, how you does know, the software would, come? Um, yeah. No, how does um, this as an app image? Uh, uh, um, I, I installed it from the, uh, Pop OS software store. Yeah. It's but a Deb. I, yeah. Is it a Debian? I mean, can I download the Debian Deb, package? Deb, uh, flat pack. Um, I haven't, I haven't noticed if there's an app image, but there is a Deb and a flat pack for sure. <laughs> so there's just a regular Debian package yeah, that I can download. Yeah, dot to... Deb. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Good to know. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk about Linux kernels. <laughs> yeah, we have a, have a big one. So uh, Linux kernel 6.1 has been released with lots of treasures inside just in time for the holiday uh, season from Linus Torvalds. Yay! And a major change we have been talking about on LWW for quite some time that has been in the works for the Linux kernel is the inclusion of the Rust programming language. And in Linux kernel 6.1, there is now mainline experimental, or, or repeat, experimental support for Rust, at least the initial batch, so that Linux kernel devs can now start writing in Rusty code. So that's really, really awesome. And there's lots of new sound hardware support, which ships with Linux 6.1, including initial work for sound support on Apple Silicon. Woohoo! Support for AMD Rembrandt with the open, the sound open firmware and support for audio on the MediaTek MT8186 SoC expected to feature in new Chromebooks. So we got to support that. <laughs> And then there's lots of game controllers, um, which get official support now. Who's um, got time to play video games, Joe? Yeah, <laughs> from the kernel XPad <laughs> input driver, including the Xbox One Elite paddles on the original Elite and the Elite Series 2. The Hori Fighting Commander 1 gamepad, including in Xbox mode. And one of my favorite controller manufacturers' latest version, the 8-bit Do Pro 2 wired controller now has support. I used, I used the small 8-bit Do for when we play uh, games here on LGC and, and uh, on Trackmania. <laughs> and there's also several uh, uh, keyboards that now have support made by uh, Wooting keyboards, including their Wooting 1, Wooting 2, 2HE, and 60HE. So lots of much needed, needed hardware support in this version. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm very glad. I, I was excited that Herder, I'm a ninja sloth, is a real boy. Because yeah. that, that's, that was the code name for this. And I was like, really? You're going to stick with it? And I'm like, yeah, we're going to stick with it. And but there are a couple of things here. You know, the kernel is now capable of decompressing, um, launching itself independent of hardware architecture on EFI systems. That's really neat. Happy to see that in 6.1. If you get one of these, these AMD CPUs, Precision Boost Hardware Control. That's in 6.1 as well. And the one thing I was curious about, uh, that ha huh moment, it's like, where's the LTS on this? Where's the LTS on this? Because traditionally, yeah. the last kernel release of the year, is the LTS. Maybe it's not going to be the case this year. I don't know. Hard and fast rules, whatnot. I, I'm waiting for an LTS so I can put it on Jackbox. I didn't get a chance to build that. I'll probably do that this afternoon and try it out. Nothing terribly earth-shattering in this, but it's good to see a bunch of the new game support and gamepad support, I should say. We'll probably be going into that a bit more in-depth on Saturday on Linux Gamecast, but yeah, all in all, a good release. And I did check right before the show. It's not in Debian testing yet. So you probably have to wait until Friday mm -hmm. and go ahead and yeah. put it in. Mm -hmm. Kadian Live. Yeah. Kadian Live was the software, the nonlinear video editor that I first started using when I started chopping up, putting videos on YouTube about 12 years ago. Then it crashed on me and I lost a lot of data. So I started using <laughs> OpenShot, but I went back to Kadian Live. Now I'm on DaVinci Resolve. I use whatever works at the time. They got a new release out, 2212. Jill, I want you to hold down the control button and try to scroll on this website. Can you uh, embiggen in the text? Uh, yeah. Oh, you, my goodness. You can? No. <laughs> well, you just said you could. <laughs> Actually, let me. 
I'm trying it. I, I thought down. I thought I just <laughs> hold down control and I'm and I'm trying to zoom in for readability. This is what I'm doing. It's just scrolling up and down. I'm kind of impressed whatever they've done there. Uh, so okay, mine work. Mine's working. Twenty two point twelve. Um, five hundred and thirty commits. Gideon live. It's ready for production ish. The most notable. The most notable out of all of this is probably the hamburger menu. That's right, kids. Yeah. You want to save some space, add an extra click to your workflow. There it is. But joking aside, this is a pretty big release. I get a bunch of neat things in here. And, uh, you know, up to the what's this? This is important. You know, it's a welcome addition for new users. It's going to tell you what the moon glyphs mean in the UI. Because, man, every video editor has its own fresh set of moon glyphs. And you know what? KDN Live can now technically be built against Qt6. That's never going to be a smooth transition. You know, we went through that with OBS Broadcaster. But it does mean um, while it builds, might not work as expected. Consider that more under construction. But for our Wayland brothers and sisters out there, they fixed the color picker on the screen. And nothing irritates me more than not being able to pick a screen color on that odd time I need to. I'm like, I need to color match that. Why isn't that working? Then you have to come up with a very interesting workaround, which is usually like take a screenshot, import that into GUMP, get the color code, then bring it back out. And thank you for fixing that, everybody involved on the Cadian Live project. You see anything in here that caught your eye? Yeah, I, definitely. Um, something that I actually utilize all the time in other video editing programs. Uh, Kaden Live now has the ability to copy and paste keyframes using Control C and Control V shortcuts. Hello, we've been wanting that feature for a long time. And there's also two new buttons have been added to the effects keyframes bar, copy keyframes and paste keyframes. And it's just nice that something we utilize all the time in DaVinci and Premiere and After Effects is is now part of Caden Live with with easily, you know, manipulating your keyframes. <laughs> well, that's something I definitely have to go back and um, play around with in Caden Live. And you get a chance so far to test out this newest version. In DaVinci Resolve, we do a thing um, way quicker than copy-paste. Uh, it has a duplication feature in your keyframe settings. Yeah. So you can easily just true. click on a keyframe, duplicate it, write it there on the timeline, and just drag it where you need it. So I wonder if Caden Live does something like that as well. That'd be yeah, kind of it, neat. Yeah, it does. I have played with that feature, but it's 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 nice to have this included as well, which is is pretty standard. Good to see new standards. Now, when Katie and Live crashed on me, I went over to OpenShot, and I used OpenShot for years and years and years and years. And for a while, it was kind of the best best thing in the town, you know. I mean, you really had Katie and Live and you had OpenShot. I, we didn't have things. We we got options now, which is different. You know, we have Olive and what what are, what are some other ones, Jill, that you would commonly use? Yeah, um, Olive uh, uh, Pity V was a very simple one that Pity works. Pity yeah, v, however you're supposed Pity to say v. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah there's a, there's a couple others. Well. Wow. OpenShot 3.0 is out. Uh, and it's got all the fun stuff that you would expect. And, you know, right out of the gate, one of the big quality of life improvements, high DPI support, because we're finally getting around to that. And that's brilliant. I'm not picking nice. on OpenShot. I'm genuinely glad that that is there. Most of the GUI assets are no longer bitmap. They've been swapped out for vector images. That's nice. Another bonus, Blender support's been bumped up to 3.3. And that's one of the things with like OpenShot that it's had support for for a long time. And it's always been a fantastic mm -hmm. little thing is the animation templates yeah. built in for Blender right out of the gate. So if you've been having problems with previous versions, that should sort this. And work has absolutely been done to improve overall stability in OpenShot. Uh, you know, stability, accelerated timelines. Those are, those are kind of like my sticking points that I'm waiting, you know, if I'm ever going to switch off of DaVinci Resolve. And to be honest with you, that's one of the things about DaVinci Resolve is like the idea of my video editor crashing is a distant memory. So I'm glad to see work being done on stability. Mm -hmm. And they've definitely Absolutely. fixed some of the memory leaks so that, you know, they've been testing. It's like, well, if we render out for like 12 hours, it no longer crashes. That's a good thing. The ability to export clips that's been added. And uh, this comes as an app image. So you just go play with it, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's what's cool. Just like with Caden Live, that's how I play with the new newest versions of of 
most of the software, if it's available for an app image, that's how I play with it. <laughs> It's definitely cool. So another um, awesome thing about OpenShot 3.0 is that it has AV1 support. Woohoo! Very good. Especially now since our uh, latest video cards can render out in AV1. And OpenShot 3.0 actually comes with many new export presets, including animated GIFs, MP3 audio only, YouTube 2K, YouTube 4K, MKV, and much more. And the other feature that I was really impressed with, uh, along with how, how much they've focused on stability in this version of OpenShot, is that the, the memory footprint has been greatly reduced, especially when you're rendering very long projects that are several hours in, in duration. And that adds to its stability and its speed. So that's a, a wonderful feature that they're you know, really focused on stability, stability, stability. <laughs> I do take one issue though. I want to download the app image. Yeah. First download links were for Windows. Oh yeah, yeah. True. Second one was for Mac. <laughs> I had to go all the way to the bottom page. To get Linux. <laughs> Come on, man. Um yeah, I'd like to go back and play with it. I want to the one thing I've liked about open shot this entire time is at least there was there was a an attempt for the export dialogue mm, yeah that's true yeah they're they're trying to play with that and make it better <laughs> it makes the slightest bit of logical sense um i've yet to see any work being done on katie and live side of that that is just mm. i imagine trying to talk somebody through that if they've never used an le before yeah or even linux I know. like they that that's where their experience stops unless they're going to Google. So good work, everybody all around mm -hmm. more stable, more speed. And let's get some accelerated timelines. Let's get some, uh, compute built into these things. Let's leverage OpenCL. Let's leverage Coda. Let's, uh, come kicking and screaming into like 2018. I'm looking forward to it. Yes. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> so a couple other things that were excited. Uh, if you like what we do, if we excite you, there you go. That sounds terrifying. You can help excite us. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's how we finance everything. Go pick a reward. Come hop in our Discord. Come play games with us a couple of times a week. Mm -hmm. Or just get to know our little Motley community. It is fun time. Early access to a bunch of things that we're going to be working on. Give you a little sneak peek. Custom RSS feed. You get the live and uncut series of the shows. It is brilliant. More than you would ever want. Trust me on that, but I got to thank some people. <laughs> I do. I do. Yeah. We got to thank Johnny. Yeah. New Not Patreon. angry Johnny. No, 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 no. Not, Not angry Johnny, Johnny five <laughs> is alive, <laughs> but this Johnny is alive. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Allegedly he could be um, reaching out and subbing, but our latest patron. Thank you very much, Johnny. Uh, now, Another thing we have is like little Amazon wish list. Jill's got one filled with RGB stuff. Pedro's got one yes. filled with home in, home invasion tools. Um, <laughs> Jordan's got one filled with, had one filled with fog machines. Go watch Saturday's show if you want to see Jordan playing around with his fog machine. <laughs> and I have one for the studio. That's how you end up on this wall back here. And uh, just kind of helping us stick things together, you know, just make entertainment stuff. And Joe, the SN Joe, who is currently... You might know him as like setting up the uh, video trucks and stuff for AWE wrestling, which is entertaining to watch um, in our Discord right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, he's like, you know what, man? He writes in because you can send a little thing in Aww. with a uh, Amazon gift. And against my better judgment, we read these. Uh, thanks for everything you guys do for the community from Joe. Ouch, Joe, you could not have cut me deeper, but thank you, Joe. No, Joe's <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Dancing Joe. <laughs> Joe's awesome. Joe Joe's been popping in a lot, playing with Track Mania, playing with Jordan on Thursdays and uh sticking around the after show. But yeah. what did he get? He got this memory rem. That's right. Ah, uh, nice Ben. This yes. is for um Your rectangle or your triangle rec rectangle? Rectangle. The one you keep <laughs> calling a triangle. Yes. <laughs> This is the memory rim everyone loves to hate when I like, what do you use? This is what's in all the systems. This is what's in the thread ripper. It's what's in Jackbox. This is the Corsair Vengeance LPX 16 gig kit. 
Honestly, if it wasn't an APU, I would have been happy putting eight gigs in it, but you know, you got to nom some of that RAM up for the APU. 32 megahertz DDR4. It's a workhorse. It's not fancy. And I promise you, I will never mess around with the timings. Everyone at home, I, I will send yeah. it at 32 and I'll be gone with it. Yeah. That'll be it. That's... End of the day. Understand, Ben. That's, that's normally what I do too. <laughs> that, I want something I stable. Do. I don't want to deal with the memory I, timings. <laughs> I'm not going I'm not going to spend an entire day trying to get 0.5% yeah. on a synthetic benchmark that means nothing i'm like mm. yeah <laughs> but you know what if but here's the thing though if that's what you enjoy doing that's awesome yeah very true yeah and and me and van have both done that before i've been that person where i've spent a day trying not to get with the, the memory I'll draw, no i got the line in the memory i've never been that person with the memory oh, I've okay. always my I've entire life it. ever since those <laughs> options were made available motherboards i'm like why are you wasting your time doing that followed by <laughs> That's cool that you do it, but it makes no sense to me. But like, well, <laughs> okay. go for it. You know, I mean, you know, I've done, we've all done. We all have our thing is what I'm getting at. Absolutely. But yeah, no fancy RAM. A um, couple of things I'm going to be working on for patrons. I've been putting this off just because it's been a time issue because December is an insane month for me for real work. Yeah. Um, but I want to do an OBS Jack video to show everybody how all that's stuck together. And another big one that is like slowly coming together. Also, I'm going to be spray painting a uh, sound card. That's just going to be a fun video. It's going to be, <laughs> going to be so cool, Ben. <laughs> one of our engineering series. It's going to be fun and short. And I got a bunch of little short ones put together, but a big one is taking one of these podcasts. You know, I finally had somebody go back to Saturday if you want to listen to it. Somebody wrote in what I do uh, in our podcasting and audio engineering. A lot of people are getting into mixing and they want to learn how to do the audio side. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll take this show and I'll take Linux Gamecast Weekly and I'll export the dry multi-track, which is just, you know, some people call them stems, but it's just the multi-track individual files that people can take and download. I put them on archive.org, on our archive.org page, and they can download the full high-res files, put them in their DAW and learn to mix because nobody bothers to take the time to do that for people trying to learn how to do stuff. and. You know, if you're just getting into mixing, you don't have a group of people or the setup to record everyone's. I'm like, here, just use, and somebody wrote in, it's like, hey, that's awesome. You know, I discovered that like eight months ago and I've been using it to practice. And that was really cool. So what I want to continue on that is to walk everybody through. Let's just say we're going to take like three files, stick those together, show you from the ground up how this is done, how you can do it at home and give you all the stuff you need to play along with a video, like a complete like 101 style walk down of how to put together a little podcast for yourself. Nice. Cause maybe that's something you want to awesome. do. And those are skills that if you wanted to leverage professionally at some point, you absolutely could. Yeah. Um, I'll show you how to do that. That is a uh, interesting, it's going to take some work in progress. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I don't haphazardly put stuff out like, that. all right. Um, Thank you for your support. Keep being awesome. Come say hi. Come play with us this Friday. Um, Trackmania, filthy.linuxgamecast.com. Bunch of lovely miscreants. If you need uh, that like built-in social group and you like puzzle games, we got you covered. I think we have a usually I think we got about four spots left. We want to keep it yeah. around 12 people. Six is nice, eight's good, 12's just right. So if you do want to pop in, head over to the Trackmania section in our Discord and we'll be there. They give you a big sloppy rubber hugs. There you yeah. Go. Oh, I'm so happy because I won third again. <laughs> third place. Two weeks in you a row. Did. <laughs> and I you're gonna have practice this week. We all got practice this yeah, week. Yeah, absolutely. We got some finicky tracks. <laughs> got some tough ones on there. Yeah. Just, just just for the holiday. Got got some fun ones, got some easy ones, but we got some to uh there's one particular one that you have to learn how to do a transition because if you don't do that transition you go flying off the track because this is an arcade racing game and it's just uh good times now uh joe bryant yeah we have good news for everybody 
don't we? Yes, we do, actually. So even That's the Upton, wrong button. I'm not Jill. That's Jill. Uh, okay. So even Upton, CEO of Raspberry Pi, um, has a holiday gift for everyone and for me and Ven here on LWW. So despite supply chain issues, they've actually been able to set aside a little over 100,000 units split across 0W, 3A+, and the 2 gigabyte and 4 gigabyte variants of Raspberry Pi 4 for single units sales. And even says to consider whether your project is, is a good fit for Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W, as these are available more easily and are in a strong stock position. But they expect supply to recover to pre-pandemic levels in the second quarter of 2023. Thank goodness. And to be unlimited in the second half of the year. And actually, even Upton in his article states, although we are sitting on substantial order backlogs from commercial customers, we expect to gradually increase the fraction of our output, which we dedicate to single unit sales next year until we're back in our pre-pandemic situation. Oh, thank goodness. But as a result of the su supply chain crisis, Raspberry Pis will increase in price. And that, that's sad news for people, especially for people that have to buy lots of them for projects and schools. So the two gigabyte variant of Raspberry Pi 4 uh, will return to its original $45 price point. The Compute Module 4 will increase by $5 from its original starting price of $25. And the price of the Raspberry Pi Zero will increase from $5 to $10. And the Zero W from $10 to $15. So that's, that's pretty substantial, but it's understandable. Um, but I, I am just happy that we're, we're seeing now finally a timeline of when we're going to be getting Raspberry Pis. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good news. So, Joe, what you're telling me is they're going to increase the price on three-year-old technology? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so, they're going to be offering me the same, but for more? Yeah, hmm. sometimes double in certain cases. You, and that's For the past sad. couple of weeks, we've been talking about a bunch of different companies offering us more for less more uh, yeah <laughs> more power for less money <laughs> way more power like yeah not three-year-old chips yeah this is what i'm talking about people i know this is what i've been talking about this whole time if you haven't listened yeah. to me I, you mm -hmm. know um i'm not nostradamus but some of these things really basic to suss out if you look down the road a little bit the raspberry pi is still in a tough position yeah like, they are um when we're talking about, you know, when you got somebody like Jordan ordering something other than a Raspberry Pi, you gotta mm -hmm. look at it, you're like, hmm. And yeah, that's five to ten dollars. Like if you're looking for a zero W, if you're looking for zero W zero W still, that's the other issue. Like you haven't been able to get a zero W for well over a year. You've already found something else. It doesn't matter what you change that price to. Like other solutions are out there. Um that's what I worry about. That's what I yeah. worry about. What, I, what would excite me, you know, this falls into the better than nothing category. So kudos to everything that they've done. And I don't want to take anything away from, you know, getting some stock available. That's good. But there's no mention of any stock of 8 gig Pi 4s. Do you know anybody that wants a 4 gig mm. Raspberry Pi? <laughs> Uh, for, you know, industrial uh, projects, that kind of thing. Oh, they've been able to yeah. buy them the whole time, Joe. We're talking yeah. about us. I know. The, those of us that need them for presentations and demos and projects and all the things and schools. And I'm looking at that is uh, like, okay, so there's not going to be any availability of 8 gigs. I'm like, that's, that's cool because everything I've been talking about for the past couple of weeks, along with Jill, have 16 gigs. Yeah. And up to 32. 32. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you said the best that I can get is four? Four gigs. Yeah. That's right a now. hard sell, man. That's a hard I sell. Know. I but know. I just hope everything works out for me. You know, well, I'm speaking from a place of concern right now. I'm not speaking yeah. from a place of anger. I understand. 
Which is a straight yeah. up concern because I've bought nothing but raspberry pies for the last decade. You know, I have don't have a ton of them. I've went crazy like people, but I don't know. I hope things smooth. I don't want to hear about the raspberry pie five. I want to hear about yeah, the sixteen. Me too. I want I to think have that that's, NVMe drive. Yeah, I think that's that's definitely coming soon. It, it kind of has to to be able to compete with the other vendors out there, and and also yeah. all you the know, new it's, stuff based on that rock chip yeah. are just burying it because that rock Amazing. chip is insane for the value. Yeah, it really is. It really is, and um, I think. One of the things that's keeping the Raspberry Pi alive, of course, is their strong community and uh, you know software they, ecosystem. Yeah, it's the ecosystem that's so good with the Raspberry Pi, and I think they'll be able to bounce back as long as it's done in a timely fashion. Mm. Mm -hmm. But we'll wait and see, right? <laughs> you know, I, I feel bad for Eben, um, Eben and because they don't know what they're chip allocations are going to be until yeah. like i mean it's hard and i understand that position where you don't want to be there we're like i don't want to tell people that this is going to happen when things not going to happen you know play it on the safe side i just hope everything works out for them you know because yeah. they've, they've done such excellent work and they've done such a good job for so long so absolutely if you've been waiting to you know something's better than nothing the only thing i worry about is the other things that have been on the market right now are way better Yeah, I know. still being optimistic. <laughs> yes, <Woo -hoo. laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. All right, Jill, we did it. Thirty-one yes, minutes. Look did. at that. Look okay, at that. thirty-one, thirty-one. <laughs> and maybe, unlike Saturday, I'm going to have some credits because I still don't know what happened. Go back and watch the end of uh, Linux Gamecast last week, where I, I spent the entire two minutes of credits, like trying to get the credits to play, and it wasn't going to happen. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah. Here we go. Let's oh, go on a ride. Here, I hear them. I hear them. There they are. Uh, yes. Uh, except this is the LWW ones without the. There we go. <laughs> the... What are you talking about, Joe? <laughs> well, it took a while for the graphics to pop up. <laughs> but that's right. That's because. Uh, yeah. Wow, look at all our wonderful patrons. Thank you for the resub, Mac Geek. Justin. Yeah. Woohoo. Thank you to our Death Notes, to our Sea Monsters, to our advisors. We love you all. And our chairlings, all the mini chairlings. Thank you so much for helping us out here at LWW. That's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. See you next week. Bye bye. Bye bye. Woohoo. <laughs>